Next is one of the most interesting panels that you can uh, listen to. Uh, we have uh, one carrier from each continent, right? So we have someone from Asia, someone from Europe, someone from US, obviously. And they're going to talk about the deployment progress. So we're going to bring the vision down to earth. And then you have three fantastic vendors who have been participating in this uh, deployment revolution. So, so we're going to sort of bring it down a notch and see where these things are heading and what are some of the successes, what are some of the missing things, challenges, etc. cetera. Uh, so with that, I'm going to just have the panel come in and introduce themselves. Please. Hi all, uh, it is my big pleasure to host this panel. Uh, my name is Ala Goldner, I work for MDOCS, I am Director of Technology Strategy and Standardization and also a member of Technical Steering Committee of ONAP and Use Case Subcommittee Chair of ONAP. And I would like to ask our panelists to introduce yourself, please, and some headlines of what your company is doing. Thank you, Ala. It's, um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, really appreciate being, uh, uh, being part of this panel. Uh, my name is Ayush Sharma. I'm heading uh, the engineering and technology function for a uh, uh, disruptive and relatively new company called Reliance Geo, backed by Reliance Group. Um, we offer connectivity, cloud, and compute services right now uh, in India region and with hope to expand internationally. On connectivity, we have about uh, approximately 180 million subscribers, uh, Pure LT, Volte, and our aspiration is to achieve uh, 400 million by the end of this year. Average data consumption is about 12 gig, um, and we hope to take it to 20 gig by the end of this year. So um, on the, on the uh, compute, uh, sorry, on the cloud side, we are relatively new, and we're building our edge cloud strategy, and on the content, we had uh, actually it was very flat, flattering to uh, hear comments from Reed Hastings about uh, every country should have Reliance Geo. So that tells us uh, that we are doing something uh, something interesting in that space, being disruptive uh, in this market. So uh, what what we our chain man's vision is to twofold uh, with this cloud content and and, and uh, sort of uh, connectivity services, two most uh, important factors um, are, first, superior user experience, and second is superior user experience at the economies of scale. And open source is very, very vital part of our technical strategy moving forward. We're doing a variety of open source projects, and that, uh, when putting open source in production, brings its own set of challenges and, and opportunities. And we'll talk, uh, we'll share our views with the community here, uh, and looking forward to sort of uh, um, uh, getting a feedback also from the community, um, hearing from the panel, as well as offline, um, you know, uh, meeting with you guys to, to get your feedback as well. Thank you very much. So, Joanne Savi, I'm from Orange. Uh, and I'm leading in Orange a transformation program that is called On Demand Networks and that is about the implementation of SDN and FV uh, with the explicit uh, intent to leverage these on-demand uh, promises. So it means that we can have drivers that are from the uh, B2B business, uh, so either in a defensive uh, approach or in a business development approach. Uh, maybe I should have said that we have uh, 28 countries as a footprint, mainly in Europe and in Africa, and that also explains the diversity of approaches of, and of deployment strategy that we can have in Orange. Because, of course, these countries are not at the same level of uh, maturity, at the same level of competition. They do not have the same stakes. So, as I said, it could be uh, either the B2B uh, business development or um, defensive approach, that is an incentive. 
and that is clearly developing this on-demand network uh, uh, promise from a portfolio standpoint. Or it can be the agility promise. Uh, and, uh, it's reducing the time to market if we are thinking about marketing uh, uh, questions, or it's reducing the time to deliver, time to repair if uh, we focus on the operations. And that's where, of course, we are quite uh, uh, concerned by the automation. Um, and uh, uh, the last, let's say, driver that could uh, uh, a country go for is the uh, advent of the 5G or the anticipation of the 5G uh, with, of course, all the business opportunities. Also, it drives uh, the IoT, uh, for example, uh, uh, or the uh, announcement of the, of the, mobile, uh, the mobile connectivity. So here is basically uh, the orange, uh, orange stake and uh, uh, standpoint uh, as we consider this uh, SDN and FV uh, transformation. Great. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Rice. Um, I'm responsible for network function virtualization uh, in software-defined networking within uh, AT&T, uh, design and automation associated with that. Um, we've been at this a little while. We have the experience. Uh, associated with some of the early work there in that area. Uh, it's largely my teams that have been involved in some of the things that you saw R put, uh, put up there in terms of Acrano and Danos and, and ONAP, and I'm looking forward to the discussion today. Thank you very much, Adam. Hi, my name is Adam Pope, and I'm the Chief Information Technology Officer for Sienna. Uh, Sienna is well known for a number of things, primarily the fastest networks in the world and optical transport infrastructure, but also through our acquisition of Cyan years ago now, uh, have the industry leading automation platform deployed in over 20 service providers live, including Orange and, and CenturyLink and a number of others. And so today I'm responsible for our long-term vision strategy and, and really what we're building into our portfolio and how that aligns with open source and, and which projects to be involved in and, and, and uh, other aspects like that. So thank you for the opportunity to be on the panel. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is uh, Ron Haberman from uh, Nokia Software. Uh, specifically, I run uh, what we call emerging products in Nokia Software. We uh, build technologies to be used by connected intelligence, uh, digital experience, auto automation, etc. Uh, units within my shop include uh, cloud, uh, cloud band, IoT, cybersecurity, uh, digital channel, and, and so on and so on, as well as the incubator where we build ideas into products and then uh, businesses. Um, in, in Nokia, right, we were connected to open source uh, for quite some time, you know, very much attached to, uh, to the space. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, but we also have, as probably most of you know, quite a wide portfolio that spans truly you know, everything from the house connectivity, optical, uh, radio, routing, switching, etc. Uh, which gives us quite a bit of a, of a good perspective on you know, how to connect the old with the new. And, and I know that you know, we'll talk a lot of, probably about um, orchestration and what it takes to actually operationalize uh, networks uh, and this you know, mixed reality of you know, old to uh, next generation is what uh, keeps me up at night, at least these days. <laughs> me too. Thank you very much. Uh, so moving on, and you know, I would like to us to talk about NFE SDN and clearly, you know, speaking of my own company, NFE SDN is seen as a key strategic area for us and we are contributing and deeply involved in ONAP. And I would like to ask each of you to explain what your company did in NFE SDN area and specifically for open source in the past years. Okay. Please, Ayush. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been uh, obviously relatively new player, uh, but still, uh, given that, you know, within two years of span, uh, what we've done uh, utilizing open source, uh, I think it's incredible. Um, so we've built um, GeoMano, which we call it, a platform based on ONAP, uh, which is in pre-production already. Uh, and we plan to bring that into production uh, fairly soon. Uh, we uh, have also uh, built our own SDN controller uh, platform. Again, that is compatible with the, both ONOS and Open Daylight. 
and we are going to introduce slowly in phased manner into the production network. Um, we are embarking on the journey to explore, and first phase would be more leveraging open source, and second phase would be as we build up more open source code is to contribute, is into what we call integrated tech as we're moving towards 5G, IoT, and MECA architectures. So in the IoT, we've already started working, uh, obviously leveraging um, some of the open source uh, platform, uh, the code to kind of build that uh, platform and then build the connectivity data and then either sort of intelligent services on top of it. Uh, on 5G and MEC, um, again, so we have a disaggregation strategy, um, which is radio router and cloud, and within the 5G span, uh, we have started to explore XRAN, uh, and we have started to already test in the lab uh, Onos-based XRAN, and we are also working with uh, some of the vendors who have hardened XRAN controller, uh, and we plan to put that in our phase two of Massive MIMO, uh, Massive MIMO uh, trials. Phase one of Massive MIMO trials is already over, so we had some learnings from those uh, Massive MIMO trial, but in the second phase, what we plan to do is, or intend to do is, is introduce centralized uh, controller, um, and we will compare whether pure open source controller works well or vendor-backed open source uh, platform works well. And based on pure merits, we'll sort of introduce that into a production network and then uh, build some value propositions on top of it. And the, the, the challenges or the use cases are first one being video. Uh, because our network is hammered with video, as you would imagine, and we want to obviously use the XRAN for, uh, to improve the end user experience and keep our network free from video. Second is more to deal with the external and internal uh, in, uh, sort of uh, interference. And third is on building the sort of control logic on top of it. So in radio, we're doing that in sort of IP or white box um, switches. So we're already talking to directly to the chipset vendors. Um, and we are also exploring Stratum, DNAS, and it was glad, I was glad to see there is a, some synergy between different uh, switching operating systems. Uh, so we obviously want to leverage a, a open source switching operating systems, and we want to build that and then ask the vendors to bring the value differentiations in terms of VNFs, how it comes into play, and then cut it across IoT, whether it's IoT gateway, whether that's a you know, virtual BBU box going into the white box, or it's um, in the cloud or in the data centers, et cetera. So that is a very important and a vital project where we are already embarking on that journey, and it's very encouraging to see sort of AT&T taking lead on that. So, and we will obviously collaborate with AT&T, uh, Doshi Telecom, and many other providers and, and work towards that sort of a, and desirable goal. And third and last point, what is, is a optical, which is a kind of a, a, a big, big, uh, you know, uh, sticking point to introduce open source there uh, because of, uh, you know, valid reasons. We started to sort of take Voyager which is coming out from the TIP program as a kind of benchmark and then um, harden that uh, sort of Voyager rod and part and build the sort of values uh, around it. And that is, uh, we are talking to different vendors as well as we are working with academia, both uh, in US as well as in India, be it Stanford, IITs, or uh, um, other places as well to see how we can sort of build that and introduce into the metro networks in the FTTH when we are offering those kind of services. So three big areas where open source and disaggregation plays an important role. Radio in XRAM, um, white boxes in operating system, and third in the optical, very clearly, obviously building, using Voyager as the model or as the benchmark and building sort of values on top of it. So the message is to our vendors is loud and clear, sort of innovate or go be extinct. Uh, sort, of, sort of that is the sort of a journey and that's the passion and that's the ambition we are driving towards to sort of mobilize to 400 million customers with that superior user experience with 5G and MEC services. Thank you very much. So um, we in Orange, as, um, as I said, um, we are at a key point, a key turn in our deployment. 
uh, which is uh, we can consider that uh, the phase uh, make it happen is done um, since we have a, a portfolio or an offer for big multinational uh, companies uh, the, of the network as a service type and that we are uh, uh, launching or about to launch a SD1 offer also for smaller segment uh, of, of the B2B market domestic level. Um, and we are also uh, deploying currently our infrastructure, our YES infrastructure, um, by the way, uh, based on uh, OpenStack and uh, uh, about also to, to deploy uh, the core network, uh, the mobile core network, uh, in a virtualized uh, in a virt as a virtualized function. So um, the make it happen uh, uh, stage is done, and now we have the challenge to make it at scale. As I said, we have 28 countries, so it means a, a huge step. Uh, um, and also, of course, we do not intend to. Uh, to stay at this level of the core network, but uh, uh, go to the edge, and that's especially the, the need for the 5G uh, at the end of the, of the day. So um, this is our status, let's say, and, uh, and um, what do we expect from the open source? You, you said the connecting the new with the old. I would say also to get the best of the two worlds that are the network world and the IT world, uh, and not the worst. And uh, I think where it's where the open source uh, can really have, a, have an added value and proof uh, uh, its added value uh, because it uh, allows a fast innovation and it allows standardization. And um, as I said previously, um, uh, we need automation and uh, we need a, a sustainable uh, value chain. And for these two uh, specific focus, I think that the open source communities uh, uh, that we are involved in, and it's especially, I'm talking about uh, ONAP for the first case, for the automation, and um, I believe in PNFP for the second one. Um, I think that, uh, as, as well as on app, of course, I, I think that where the open source uh, dynamics is really, really <coughs> and we, we clearly invest in Orange uh, in these fields, in these uh, specific fields. Uh, we have also interest, as, uh, as you mentioned, uh, for the uh, white box uh, question or the universal CP uh, question. Uh, and I have mentioned that uh, uh, we are working about the uh, uh, portfolio for the B2B, but uh, it's also a potential opportunity for the wholesale market uh, that uh, we have a look on uh, also. Thanks. Good. Um, we well, you know Andre kind of went through our journey in, in his keynote. Um, you know, we had very public goals, you know, that uh, John Donovan was nice enough to give us um, early on. And, um, you know, when we first started, we really didn't have a, a big interest in open source, to be honest with you. In fact, we thought this was going to be some of our secret sauce uh, in, in the way that, that we did this. And then, you know, kind of as our work evolved and our thinking evolved, we realized it was probably better to get more people involved and to get a bigger community involved so that this could be a, a wider phenomenon, if you will, uh, than just AT&T. We had a lot of discussions with you know, aligned uh, uh, folks, and some of whom are on this panel, uh, early on uh, around those areas. But you know, you know, we've had goals of you know, 55% last year, 65% this year, 75% by 2020. So those are, again, very public goals. I think one of the things that's helped us is that experience that I talked about, and the experience that we'll be able to leverage in 5G, uh, so it'll kind of be born in the cloud. I don't think we'd be confident enough to say it would be born in the cloud if we hadn't gone through what we have gone through and the work that we've done. Um, and you know, from our standpoint, uh, we see more and more opportunity uh, with open source. Uh, and I think around the community in general, uh, because while no single one of us 
in terms of communication service providers is as big as some of the hyperscale. Together, we're bigger than all of them, yeah. right? And I, and I think that that's really kind of the message I'd like to leave this group with is like how we work together as a community for that common kind of 80, 90% kind of overlap that we have that we yeah. get benefit from. Uh, and then, you know, with the specialization that we talk about, it'll probably be that other 10% that'll be mm -hmm. unique to AT&T, unique to Reliance, unique to Orange, or, or, or whoever else um, is in that mix. Yeah. And I think that that is a big benefit for overall for this community, as well as the vendors too, to be honest with you, because again, they benefit by commonality, that they get something they can reuse over and over and over again. And to that extent, you know, uh, I think us working together will, will certainly help that. So I think, you know, in terms of open source, again, what we're doing here, I think is, you know, we've talked about it, all the different projects. But one thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, and Andre mentioned a little bit about this is ONF. Mm -hmm. And I think early on, some work there was uh, very interesting and kind of directionally correct, but it really didn't kind of get over that hump that was needed to really put it into production. And I know that a lot of the folks uh, have worked really hard on kind of making some substantive changes there and get more community input, more communication service provider input, so that can actually be something that's truly a reference design that's leverageable in production that takes into account operational needs and everything else. And so that kind of thing, in addition to just open source, I applaud that kind of work, and I think we need more of that. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Adam. So uh, CN has been very involved in open source for really the entire history of um, the Blue Planet uh, platform. In fact, Blue Planet incorporates over 30 open source projects today. Um, but we, we've realized that open source is, is fantastic as a catalyst to really accelerate, but it's not free. It takes investment to actually harden it and deliver it, package it, be able to deploy it, manage it. And, and in fact, at this show, uh, we've announced uh, as of this morning that we're incorporating the ONAP policy framework into to augment our Blue Planet own uh, existing policy framework. Um, and we think that that's absolutely critical as it gives a new capability for us to be able to serve our customers better. Um, we are very interested in driving the standardization of policy definition and, and uh, the language of policy itself because, frankly, we believe that policy becomes a fundamental component of automation in general. Policy will enable us to uh, drive cost out through standardization and create better, more unique experiences, but also ones that can be operated in a more universal fashion. Um, the challenge will be to, to define policy language that actually works across carriers and works within a carrier's to multiplicity of operations environments. And I too share your concern about bridging kind of the old with the new. We're, we're probably gonna be in a hybrid network situation for a very long time. And, uh, and we need to be able to leverage that. That's core value that the service providers have. Uh, we need to bridge that gap, if you will, between sort of the existing infrastructure and all the new in a policy controlled way. So we're really excited about it. We're real familiar with it. And we will definitely be uh, in, embracing the ONAP policy and uh, we'll be making contributions back and run bug fixes and so forth. Thanks, and Ron. Uh, where, where do I start? I mean, la last year was, uh, was truly a, a leap year, I think, for, for NFV as, as an industry. Um, we have now we started just last year over 90 new projects you know, all over the world. Uh, over 70 of them include uh, CloudBand from a Mano portfolio perspective uh, alone. Uh, we, we, we said from the beginning that this will be, needs to be multi-vendor and an open environment, and, and, and boy, did last year prove that it's possible, right? We have you know, over 450 types uh, of VNFs that have been integrated across these uh, different projects. Uh, more than a third of them come from uh, different vendors, uh, usually our direct uh, competitors, which makes it always uh, fun. Um, we increase our investment in, in open source uh, quite drastically, not just within my team and Nokia software, but across the board uh, in Nokia. Uh, we have some projects that we started, you know, like Vitrage, which I'm very uh, proud of, uh, part of uh, OpenStack root cause analysis. Uh, we spend quite a bit of resources in, in things like Mistral for, uh, for workflow and, and a few others. Um, but across all the different uh, organizations, right, starting with, you know, with uh, the contribution that ONA brought, um, I think we're now in the top five, uh, adding more and more uh, developers all the time, uh, working on, you know, A, integration, hardening, but also bringing more of the uh, components and compatibility, you know, into the ONAP components. 
across the entire uh, Nokia portfolio. I actually don't remember how many hundreds of products we have to, to work with. Um, uh, I have to share OPNFV, also very, very important, uh, making a lot of investment in, in doctor. I uh, think it's critical to, to the industry. Um, and maybe just you know, from, from an inter internal uh, transformation perspective, uh, we created uh, a couple of years ago a, a group, uh, we called it the Common Software Foundation, which is you know, what we internally use to essentially industrialize the use um, of open source and, and more importantly, kind of like separate the business logic of uh, the different software pieces, you know, the, the VNFs, um, you know, from everything else, you know, everything that, you know, we would consider uh, infrastructure. Um, and basically, end of last year, we, you know, we finished kind of the first round of uh, getting most VNFs on, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, components and the blueprints coming out of this team, um, which helps both ourselves, obviously, and the community, given that we are truly industrializing the use and centralizing uh, how these components, uh, blueprints, and in turn, the pass layer would be managed across uh, all of our VNFs. Thank you very much. And uh, moving to the next question, actually, now, and looking on this uh, audience, this is the right audience, actually, to resolve the technical issues and the challenges we face. So really, I would like to ask you to bring one challenge that you find as a major one for 2018, and why you see this as a challenge, and for this audience to resolve. Please, Ayush. Sure, I, I clearly see three, but I'll stick to one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me mention three just. Um, uh, so interface is one, which is the biggest one. Um, second one, I see perception. And third one, system integration. So I'll uh, maybe stick to the first one, which is the topmost, is the unless and until the vendor community uh, do not open the interfaces. Uh, I'll take radio as an example. So if you're doing XRAM massive MIMO field trials, my message was a bit strong, but again, I would like to reiterate that message that innovate or go extinct. So there are vendors which are, or there are emerging vendors which are embracing that, and they will open the interfaces to radio network. Right? So uh, that is very, very vital for the innovation to happen. Uh, that was just an example, and I could go on a lot uh, in, in such examples, but uh, this is very, very important for the innovation. This is very important for us to solve the video problems at the edge, uh, which is, you know, um, vast majority of traffic, uh, the service provider that hammered with, and they make a very little revenue, and it's a common problem. So if we could solve that user experience problem and have the sounds, media agnostic sounds, uh, using these controller interfaces and have those vendors open those interfaces, I think that will be in favor of the community. That will be in favor of uh, uh, everybody, with the providers, as well as for the new players to come in to play. So I would reserve my comments on the second and third one. In the interest of <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from my standpoint, I, I will uh, come back to the industrialization stake, as uh, Ron mentioned. But uh, um, from the standpoint of the value chain, I think that uh, the key point here is collectively, and that's why the audience is relevant, uh, to make the value chain viable, sustainable and viable. Um, and this means that, uh, uh, yes, we have this point of opening the interfaces and so on. Uh, so maybe um, going to a point of uh, standardization for the NFVI, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can, at the end of the day, stick to the SDN NFV promises. Because I fear that today we diverge from these uh, initial promises, not are the agility, uh, uh, basically, um, and that more or less claims for a, a kind of pure cloud model and a, a decoupling model between the, the telco cloud and the application uh, running on the top of it. And um, so to, to come back to your question, uh, for me, and, and we have several uh, levers or several actions beside, but uh, uh, 
um, behind, excuse me, but this is this question of the value chain uh, that probably we are struggling with today and that um, could have some ambiguity in the, in the behavior of actors, uh, uh, of course, because we have to accept that we disrupt our business model. It's a risk for all of us, but at the end of the day, um, we could probably uh, keep uh, value each of us and uh, uh, leverage these promises if we deliver them. That's good. Um, you know, I, I, I really want to cover, there's, there's probably one big area, but, but it, I want to make sure people understand where I think this fits. So when we first looked at this, we said, where can we go apply SDN and, and network function virtualization? And, Somewhat, somewhat orthogonal. We said, look, we can apply that in our IP core, we can apply that in our Metro packet core, we can apply that in our wireless core, the mobile RAN uh, with ORAN and other things. Uh, we can apply it in IP services, we can apply it at premises equipment. So I wanna make sure that when I talk about this, everyone understands that's the, the world that we're talking about. It's a fairly big world. It's not just wired, it's not just wireless, it's a fairly big world. Um, I think that the time, and this kind of gets to automation and the interfaces and everything else, but the time to onboard a VNF, you know, I think it's, it's time to change that. And, and what I mean by that is that, you know, it, early on all these were unique and everybody was learning, but right now I think we've got a much better idea of what a Lego block should look like as opposed to a snowflake. And in different areas of those uh, uh, areas I just described, some people have done a really good job of making it easy to onboard and others haven't. Uh, and I think it's time for the vendors in those areas to step up because I think uh, in fairness, a lot of the service providers here have stepped up. They've, they've gotten on very common platforms. They've gotten on common automation and we're trying to make it easier for those vendors to be able to deliver uh, commonality to us, you know, Lego blocks. And, and I think that this year, that's something that we're, I know we're going to drive very hard, both in open source as well as within AT&T. Yeah, so Sienna software services business really exists to, to help our service provider customers really solve automation problems. And to, we also have seen that sort of one size architecture hasn't really fit all circumstances. Um, and so anything we can do to the, in the community, we've been a huge recipient of value from open source, as I said, but anything we can do as a community to even drive further standardization of those Lego blocks, how things really do work together, what interfaces are there, then I think we have a better chance to really enable greater levels of automation at lower cost and be able to be more agile, like I think everyone on the panel really wants. So for us, it's about integration interfaces and definitions and languages and so forth so that we, we know the target we're to comply to to drive those benefits that we're all looking to, to get out of the industry. So a customer of mine asked me, you know, recently, can, can you please, you know, stop bringing me a lot of new things and, and help me use, right, the stuff that is there. And, you know, it, it actually, it's half joking, but it, it, it's very serious because I think we, we reached a point where my ask is think simplification. We have a lot of pieces, we have a lot of code, we, we have a lot of ability, but it's complicated, right? It takes quite a lot of effort pretty much across the chain, right? From, from getting it together, from building it, installing it, managing it, onboarding the VNFs and managing you know, the VNFs once, once they're onboarded. And, and the piece that he's missing in, is the simplification that I think is critical. And if, if I may just talk about the the suggestion of how to solve it, I would ask you know, the developers, think of the operations guy, right, or girl, that, that, that needs to come there and without understanding right, all the details of the code, make use right, of the system for the purpose it's there for, the, the, the purpose being you know, moving bits and providing service, and add your design based on, on that basic user in mind, right, as opposed to the tech itself. So I guess when I, you know, take what all of you said, which is basically about openness, modularity, these are things, agility, these are probably the things that we need to concentrate on. 
in the near future. Yeah. With that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.